toe towel this week. I have absolutely no idea about them. Huh? I know. Let's see what the fandom likes. Hello fellow Hearts of the Blue and welcome to my channel and also welcome to another episode of Heavy Contrast, a series where I try to paint one miniature to the highest standard possible using just contrast paints and highlights and for this episode I'm going with Tau. So let's get cracking. As you can see, we are starting from a base coat of Korax White, and our first step will be to paint his cloak, and for this I'm going to use Flesh Tears Red. I'm starting with the cloak and all the messy details, because I don't want to destroy the work I will do on the armor, and I will paint the armor last for that uh, sole reason. If you are not an idiot like I am, you may be able to paint the armor first, if you build this in sub-assemblies. Which you should do, by the way. As always, once you have your first layer applied, you should go back and absorb any excess or pooling where you don't want it to be. With the red cloak now base coated, I'm going to paint all the black undersuit and for this, first of all, I need to clean everything that I messed up using Korax white again. Don't be too preoccupied with covering things that won't be seen, but we try and, and pick up everything that has red that should be black. With all the black parts now cleaned up, I'm going to start with a kind of a pre-shade of basilic and grey over all the black. This serves as a very useful pre-shade, so when we apply the black temper it doesn't look like wash out grey instead of a black. Just apply this over all the details that you want to be black. With my basilic and grey now dry, I'm going to move into black templar, and as I said before, I'm just going to cover the same areas that I did with Basilic and Grey with Black Templar. The only exception will be this twisted rope here because I've decided to change the color that it will be. So I'm just taking Black Templar and just applying it over all the same areas. The black temple is now drying and I kind of want to have like a burgundy color on that rope so I'm going to try to apply flesh serious red over that rope that was base coated with basilica and grey. With all those layers now applied I'm going to start highlighting all the red details and for this I'm going to start with Evos on Scarlet. Here on his robe I will do a glaze with Evos on Scarlet over the, over the main folds so to give them a bit more brightness. Of course uh, not a lot of Tau minis have capes so you can pretty much ignore this. This is the type of consistency I have in on my paint. So quite a heavy glaze, but the, the GW reds are so nice. They just glaze like a dream. And of course, don't forget to edge highlight all the details. With this, I'm going for a quite a thick edge highlight. With my highlights of Evil Sun Scarlet not done, I'm going to move into Wild Rider Red. And what I will do with Wild Red is just do a very thin edge highlight with this. Just 
just speak of the edges, the top of the folds of all the, the cape here. And if your mini just has armor, just speak at the edges of all the panels with the thinnest line you can make. With the highlights of Wild Rider Red now done, I'm going to move into Fire Dragon Bright, and I will do the exact same edge highlight, only this time I will concentrate it towards the very corners and not do it all over. It's a plus if you can make it a bit thinner than the Wild Rider Red, but it's not a must. Same goes, of course, for the pieces of armor, where I will just put this edge highlight towards the corners. With that little highlight with Fire Dragon Bright done, I'm going to move into Luganath Orange, and I will just do very small dots of Luganath Orange in all the corners. This is especially important on the armor panels. So if you have, for example, the head to paint, this will make it pop and make it look really awesome. But I will of course do this also on his cape. With the red parts all finished, I'm going to concentrate in the black details and I'm going to highlight them all using Dumpstone. I will basically just do a thin edge highlight with this. The contrast paint has already gave us a very nice gradient from black to dark gray. It's just a matter of picking up all the details so we can see them very, as good as possible. My highlights with Downstone are now done. And I'm going to move into Administratum Grey. I'm just basically going to do the same edge highlights, but I will make it I will make them smaller. Same way as I did with Fire Dragon Bright. With that highlight done, I'm going to move into the last highlight for the black details, and this will be Korax White, and I will just do very small dots of Korax White in the very tips of each fold, or of each edge. The black details on the model are not finished, so I'm going to tackle the white armor first, and for this I'm just going to clean up everything that is armor with Korax White. Korax White is an amazing paint, it just covers so well. You will probably need a couple of coats of course, but considering this is basically very light grey over black, it's amazing. With the red and the black out of the way, it's now time to paint all the white armor. And for this I'm going to use a mix of one part skeleton horde, one part apothecary white and two parts contrast medium. I'm just going to apply this all over the white armor. 
uh, you can, if you know which parts you want to be grey now, uh, you can skip them, but as I'm not 100% sure, I will decide on those later. There isn't, there isn't such a big deal. As always, I'm going all over a section. And then I will go and absorb any excess. With my layer of Apothecary White and Skeleton Hold now dry, I'm going to paint in all the grey details using Basil Canon Grey. So my advice is you clean those areas with Cortex White first, so you will have the cleanest uh, grey you can possibly get. Also let that Basil Canon Grey seep into the recesses here. So in the end I did two thin layers of Basilic Canon Grey over all the grey details because I wanted a bit more contrast and now I'm going to go and do a recess shade on the main armor and what I will do is do a mix of one part wildwood, one part skeleton hold and one part medium and I want this to go into all the crevices of the armor. You don't need to really worry too much about being like 100% clean because when we do our highlights on the white details we can hide a lot of crimes. But of course the neater you are the better. With that extra shading done, on the white armor I'm going to move into highlighting it and for this I'm going to take Ulthuan Grey and I will do a kind of a heavy glaze with Ulthuan Grey. You can see how thin the paint is there and I'm going to apply this into the panels towards the top of each panel. So as you can see, I'm glazing this towards the upper section of each of the panels and I will also catch all the edges with it for good measure but this time with a regular consistency. With that highlight of Ulthu and Grey now finished and our Tao looking much better, I'm going to do the final highlight on the white armor and this will be just pure white. What I will try to do here is to the smallest edge highlight I can make all across the armor. The white edge highlight is going to take quite a while to do, so to save me some time, I'm going to start base coating other areas, so while those areas dry, I can keep on edge highlighting, and I'm going to start with the skin, and for this I'm going to use a Space Wolves Grey.
as always I go in back and taking out from the places that where I don't want it. And once this first layer dries, I'm going to go and apply a second one in exactly the same way. I'm not going to show it to you, but just know that I will apply two glue coats of Space Wars Grey over all the flesh. And with that last highlight and those contrast layers apply, it's time to highlight the rest of the armor by using Administratum Grey on an edge highlight over the grey details. And for the final highlight on the grey details, I'm just going to take Ulfu and grey and do a dot highlight in the very corners of the armor. With that done, our armor is fully finished and now there is just one large detail left to paint, which is all his flesh. And for the first highlight I am going to use a mix of two parts rush grey and one part screaming skull. Using the screaming skull to highlight his face will give it a warmth that will look very natural and is I believe what the heavy metal team uses to highlight Tau flesh. I might be wrong of course, but that's what I see when I look at those photos. I'm just picking up all these details on his face, which are rather nice by the way. On top of those I'm going to mix, mix like kind of a heavy glaze as you can see there, and I'm going to apply a highlight on the top of his head like this. As you can see, I'm moving my brush towards the area I want the highlight to be. So more pigment deposits there, and we have a nice blend. For the second highlight on the flesh, I'm going to use a one to mix of brush grey and a screaming skull. As you can see I'm painting some texture on his lips, which looks makes it look really nice. And as I did before with the previous mix, I'm going to thin this down quite a bit and apply a glaze on this on top of the of the head. And for the final highlight in the flesh, I'm going to take pure Screaming Skull and I will just do the very, very thinnest highlight possible, just picking up some very small dots here and there. With the flesh now done, I'm going to take 
Black Templar. And you can use just a regular black really. And I'm going to drop this into the eyes. like that and basically picking up the whole area of the eyeball with this and once that is dry I'm going to take pure white and I'm going to do the smallest possible dot on that eyeball so be very careful And just like that, place a dot in the middle of the eyeball. And when the flesh painted, there's just a couple of details left to paint. And I'm going to start with the one that is going to make the most difference. And this will be all the gold details. And for this, I'm going to use Retributor Armor as a base coat. So I'm just painting with this all the areas that I want to be gold. For most tau, that just would be this kind of split joints of all the signs that they have on their weapons and on their armor but for this guy I'm also going to paint the kind of connection this this decorative pieces on her on his hair with that base coat done, I'm going to shade it using Gilliman Flesh. I'm just going to lay a good layer of Gilliman Flesh over all the gold details. While the Gilliman Flesh is drying, I'm also going to base coat using Aethermatic Blue all the lenses and all the lights. All those details were previously base coated with Corax White. The first layer of Aethermatic Blue is now dry and just over the lenses I'm going to apply a second one, but I'm going to concentrate it towards the top right corner just like that with all those contrast layers now applying I'm going to highlight all the gold and for this I'm going to use Canoptic Alloy and I will just do a very thin edge highlight over all the gold details With the gold now finished, I'm going to move into the into the blue lights and the blue lenses. And for this, I'm just going to take pure white. And for the lights, I'm going to do a dot of white right in the middle. And for the lenses, I'm going to do a dot of white in the darkest part. Plus a white highlight in the opposite corner. And with those details painted, there's just one thing left to paint, and that is this braid that is holding his cape. And I want a different shade of red, so I'm going to highlight it using a squeak orange. And for the last highlight on the model, I'm going to use Cadian Flesh Tone and just do very small dots of Cadian Flesh Tone in the corners of each of the braids here.
and with that last step done, our Tau is now finished and with the base painted he is looking quite awesome. I'm really happy with this one. I will admit that painting Tau is not probably my favorite thing in the world but this was good fun and it's always good to paint something different to change a bit from your usual stuff and this is a very good example and I really enjoy painting his cape, that was extremely good fun. So guys, I really hope you enjoyed this one and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye! Do you like my videos and want to help me make them? Well, there are several ways you can do that. You can follow me on social media. You have the links to all my social media in the description below. You can also check all my affiliate links in the pinned comment of this video. Use those links in your next hobby purchase and help me without any additional cost to you. Now I have links for my brushes there. I also have merch that you can see just below this video or in the shop tab of my channel. But most importantly, there is Patreon and channel members. You have the link to my Patreon in the description below and in the pinned comment of the video. Or if you prefer, you can just click the join button below this video. Patreon and channel members help me do all the cool projects that I want to make and help me improve the quality of my videos. Don't be afraid, no content will ever be hidden behind a paywall, but it's a nice way to help me and you will get something back for generosity. As I said, guys, thank you very much for watching. A special thank you, first of all, to Mitch the ET Rhinosaur. Mitch runs an amazing YouTube channel which all profits go to charity. Check him out, link in the description. He makes amazing videos and it's also for a great cause. And secondly, but not less importantly, thank you to Daniel Figueiredo, Heather Amster, Lawrence Higismundi, Nicolas Fornell, Ben Morin, Christoph Moret, Javi Mota, Joshua Bohannon, Michael Boye, Table Miniatures, Bell Drain, Victor Domena, Equitas, Arundel, Carlos Rivera, Charles Armintas, Chris Fivey, Kieran Murthile, Darcy Farah, Dr. V, Gareth Smith, G4, Jamie Milligan, Josh Simpson, JT Butler, Kevin Mian, Kevin Sulas, Ronald Lindemann, Mark Jarvis, Matthew Miller, Natius Maximus, Samuel, Sasha Park, Supernev, Thomas Ustegor, and Bill Caswar for being the coolest persons on the planet. Be like these fine folks, show my Patreon and take control.